Number one, your assignment in his or her life is not complete. We should understand that while we may meet different people in the course of our day-to-day -day activities, not all meetings are casual and not everybody is just a normal acquaintance. God sets up meetings and brings people into our lives for one or the other reason. Knowing the exact reason a person is in your life and the role they have to play will help you to keep things in perspective and know how to deal with each individual. Some people are there to help you in certain areas of your life. It could be a spiritual life, your career, your self-development and others. We tend to look at these people as mentors, but it does not necessarily have to be someone highly placed. It could be a sibling, a close friend, an employer or employee, a colleague or one of the brethren in your fellowship. The key is knowing the role a person has to play in your life and vice versa. If you are the one trying to effect a change in that person's life or see that they become better, then you should know ahead of time that the change you desire to see in that person's life would not happen overnight or automatically. You might have been giving your all, hoping for the best and doing all that you can for that person and yet, they do not seem to notice your effort. As frustrating and tiring as it might be, you should not give up on that person. Do not cut off that person because of what seems to be happening now. That is not what God would want for you. Instead, you should take a cue from God himself. Despite the several times that he has stretched forth his loving arms towards mankind, we keep falling short of his glory and many keep rejecting his love and the sacrifice that he made. But that does not stop him. He does not cut us off because we sin. He just keeps admonishing us and calling us to himself through the help of the Holy Spirit. If he ever decides to give up on us, we would be nowhere to be found. You have an assignment to fulfill in that person's life and until it is complete, do not chase them away. Keep on trusting that the change you desire or the fruits that you hope to see will spring forth someday. You are where you are now because someone decided not to give up on you. In the same way, take it as a trust and a charge that you will not give up on that person or cut them off. Number 2. They might be the source to your breakthrough. As humans, we have every tendency to be short-sighted and see things only as they appear in the present, but with the help of God, through the Holy Spirit in our lives, we can see ahead or at least receive direction that would guide us into making the right decisions for the future. When we have been hurt or offended, or things do not go the way we hoped they would, we can easily make decisions that seem right at the moment but could have future consequences. Nobody is perfect, no matter how anointed or special they may seem to be. As humans, we have a natural tendency to make errors and step on each other's toes. So you do not expect to have a perfect friend, partner, colleague or a parent. As a matter of fact, we are supposed to give space for offenses because they would rise whether we like it or not. The fact that your parents offend you does not stop them from being your parent and cutting them off would only bring you greater loss. As stated earlier, everyone in your life is there for a particular purpose. While some are there to build you, some are equally there to connect you to your blessings. It is important that you do not look at anybody as unimportant and decide to let them go based on that perspective. That person may not look like it now, but if God is asking you to hold on, then just hold on. The prodigal son cut himself off his father and later came to regret it when he had spent all that he had in a strange land. However, he came back to his senses and went back to his father who accepted him and welcomed him back with a feast. Another story in the scripture is that of Ruth and Naomi. Naomi was a widow and was returning from the land of Moab to Israel empty-handed. It would be the most natural thing to want to cut off such a person who had such a history of tragedy trailing her but Ruth did not let go. And we saw where that led her, to the purpose and plan of God for her life. Before you make a clean break and decide to move on, think about it well. But even more than thinking, allow God to lead you and help you make a decision. God will never ask you to stay with someone who is toxic in your life or who will lead you to your downfall. So, if he is asking you not to cut off of someone, then it's for your own good and for a greater purpose that will only play out if you stick to God's plan. 
Number three, you need each other. According to the law of the systems, a part can never make up the whole. We all need each other, and that is one of the reasons the Lord made the church as a body. Just as the eye cannot decide to stay on its own, or the leg decide to do without the rest of the body, so also we cannot do without each other. As believers, we are brothers and sisters, members of a single family. And family never gives up on each other. No matter what the person has done or the offense they have committed, you cannot afford to cut them off. It's like cutting off a part of you, and that will only lead to hurt and pain on both sides. That person might not be acting like they need you or want you at the moment, but the truth is, they do. The prodigal son was not thinking things through when he asked for his share of the inheritance from his father. He thought he could take care of himself. He thought he was old enough to know what to do, but he was not prepared at all for what was out there. But was he the only one at loss? No. His father must have felt hurt as well. Imagine the pain of losing a child, not knowing their whereabouts. Hence, he waited day and night with expectation. You need that person just as much as they need you, and that is the more reason you should not cut them off. Do not wait until you lose what you have before you realize the worth. Whatever you do in life, you would always need people. Despite the anointing of Paul, he needed people to help him in the ministry. At the time, he had a sharp contention with Barnabas because of Mark, but later on, he testified that Mark was useful to him in the ministry. Someone who is not useful to you now might be instrumental in your life later on. Number four, to avert future disaster or tragedy. Sometimes we serve as a system of support for certain people and when we let go of them, they can become distraught and lose confidence in life or in themselves. We all need someone to believe in us and have faith in our abilities when we are down and have lost all hope. So, put yourself in that person's shoes and imagine the hurt and pain they would go through or the dangers that they may be exposed to. And this is not about physical danger alone. When Lot left the company of Abraham, he became victim to so many things. First, he was taken captive, and if not for Abraham, he would have become a casualty of war. As another instance, he would have been destroyed together with the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah, but his relationship with Abraham and with God kept him. So many things could go wrong when you cut off someone from your life, and you might later come to regret your action. Rather than regret your actions, just choose instead to hold on to that person and stand by them, no matter the circumstances. God has a plan and a purpose in all of it. So, let that be at the back of your mind. Besides, you lose nothing by helping others. Number 5. It is exemplary of God's love. Finally, love according to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 never gives up. It hopes for the best, expects the best, and bears up under any condition. Just in the way that God never cuts us off, He expects us to do the same with people around us. When you still care for people despite their wrongs or their conditions, it goes a long way to show that there is good in the world and it expresses love much more than words could ever do. Love can melt the hardest of heart and convert even the most hardened criminal. It's what God expects of us as believers. If not for any other reason, do it because God asks you to.